deal. So we're going to hang out. So it looks like we got lots of people jumping on. I'm super excited to have you here. Um, those of you that don't know Lana, she is out of, I'll do a little intro for you, and I'm sure you'll go into a little bit more too, but she's out of Colorado Springs. And I got to know Lana through, you know, our network with Real. And then like Ashley mentioned, we're working on the women's event in Denver next month. And um, some of you maybe met Lana when she came out. When was that, Lana? Like three, three or four months ago? Yeah. A little while ago. Um, she came out and met a few of you guys on here too, but Super excited to have you because she is the master at referral-based business. And when I say referrals, I think we're used to a couple different things when we talk about referrals. Like for us, we talk about Zillow and we talk about Rocket and Veterans United and things like that. Those those to us on the team are referral-based, but, but actually Lana has referral-based in ways that she knows how to nurture clients that she's had relationships. She throws awesome parties. She does all these extra things to keep her clients referring, coming back and also referring other people that they know. So um, Lana, I'm just really excited to have you and you just look as beautiful as ever. So I'll let you take it away from here. Well, I specifically showered and put some makeup on, you knowing I'll be presenting in front of such an amazing group of people. You look great. Siri, thank you for having me. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to be respectful towards our time together, and I'm going to try to provide as much value as I can. And everything that I will be sharing with you is what we do on a daily basis. And then <clears throat> let's try to save a little bit of time to answer some questions, and let's drop them in the chat. And I'll be monitoring the chat. So if something is unclear or you want to pop in the question, I'll pause and I'll answer it. But now we're going to do uh, the screen share. Bear with me. Uh, bear with me. All right, all right, all right. Are we seeing the screen? It's supposed to be blue matching my nails. Yes. yes. All set. Hold on. No, I need to make it larger. How do I make it larger? See, good thing I'm uh, good at selling real estate and not technology. Hold on. I got this. Here we go. All right. Get it. We're in business, friends. And <laughs> Today's topic is going to be dominate the competition with the referral based business model. My name is Lana Rodriguez and I'm coming to you from Clara Springs, Colorado. Here is my social media handle and I would love to connect with you because down the line you may have some questions, you may have some ideas and I will be available to, you know, if you want to run something by me later on, I'm available just like Siri is available. We're always available. A uh, little bit about me, because some of you are like, who's this lady with some bright ass nails? Why should we listen to her? Well, just like most of you on this call, I had super humble beginnings in real estate. This is me and my newborn daughter placing a good old Remax sign, because that's what we do. And we're part of Remax. We represent that balloon. And I'm also missing eyebrows in that photo. So I'm not quite sure what was going on there, but here we are. And my real estate journey landed like this. I was five years with Remax, then three years with Keller, uh, Keller Williams, because that's what we do. We go from Remax to Keller. Um, in August 2022, I joined Real Broker. And uh, some career milestones be looking like this. From 119 transactions as a solo producer uh, with a part-time TC operating out of state in 2000, 2016 with a newborn at home. Um, I'm at 500 transactions for the last two years, uh, running and going with my team with a zero um, paid lead source. So, and I once again, I operate at Colorado Springs, Colorado, and we call it America's Backyard. Also, for some of you who may be wondering, where is that accent coming from? I'm an immigrant. I have been in America for last 17, 18 years, and I'm still learning how to properly speak English. I'm a proud mom, uh, autism mom, it's a journey, and I'm a military spouse, and I'm also a weight loss junkie. Whoa, yeah, I know, surprise. So I've been kind of on a binge eating weight loss journey for many, many years, and I finally got it under control because of the weight loss medication, and there is a good, nice article floating around. All right, team, so today we're going to discuss about going back to the basics. There's 40 of you amazing participants, and I can guarantee you that each of you has database somewhere. Hopefully it's in the CRM. For me, for the longest time, my database was within my Facebook. Because when I joined Remax in 2014 as a brand new licensed agent, neither we were told or advised to use any CRM accordingly. 
Uh, so anyone I met or encountered down my way, I simply added them on my Facebook. Uh, up to this point, Facebook is still a very powerful tool for me. I will explain you guys why. But right now we're coming towards the end of quarter two. There's going to be quarter three approaching. But it's the time to organize and audit our database, especially during the shifting year as we have. And for some of you, you're like, well, what am I going to audit? Like, what is there to audit, Lana? Well, how about we perform an audit on all our past clients? All right. So we have currently 500 past and future clients living in Colorado Springs area. And what we do on regular basis, on annual basis, is me and myself and my client care manager, we sit down and we go through every family, every family. And we use Chime here. We have been using Chime even before we became part of Real Broker Family. But see, I, I, I'm not friends with Chime, like meaning it's complicated for me to log in. So when we do such audit, I ask everything to be presented in Excel sheet because it's much more user-friendly for me to go through that information. And what we do, we go through one line by line through the client's names, make sure they have a correct email, and we make sure they're still part of our community and they did not wander off. Why? Because look, even though I believe I'm the best real estate professional in my city, people still going to go and use somebody else. So we did the same exact audit um, last year, uh, November timeframe, and we have discovered that 10 families out of 500 listed with somebody else. So see, when you work by referral and when you track your people, you take it more personal. So what do you guys think I did? What did I did? I went and I reached out to each of these families asking, hey, we enjoyed having you part of our community. Will you please share why have you chose not us to represent you in this process? And some of them, some of the people are going to reply to you. Some of the people are going to ghost you. But some of the answers we got were like, well, you know, my neighbor Jimmy got licensed and blah, blah, blah. Or this guy from church. Most of the time we kind of see what happens. There was one family who listed with open door. And guess what? They've been on the market for over 150 days. Not my problem. See ya. Also, when you perform such audit, make sure you collect everybody's birthdays and home buying anniversaries accordingly. And maybe there is another special date they want to share with you. And when we organize our database, when we do that, it's very important to have this concept, A, B, C, and D. So your A people, who are they? Well, first of all, they are your biggest fans. They're your top referral partners. And we call them typically A, A pluses. So people who are going to uh, you know, refer you with their eyes closed and who's going to probably support you anytime there is a real estate conversation held. So then there's Bs. Your Bs are going to be uh, people who know, like, and trust you. And most of the time, most of the time, it's going to be your past, present, and future clients. Because, huh, they already know who you are. They like you, hopefully, right? If you're not a, uh, you know, <laughs> I was going to say a douche, but, uh, and they're going to trust you because if they trusted you, represent you in their real estate transaction, most likely they're going to trust you in many different levels. And then there's C's, your C's are your acquaintances. So this is your people from your sphere. This is probably your Facebook friends, your Instagram followers. They're your acquaintances. So also I want you to start thinking the way you conversate with your A people and it's not how you conversate with your um, C people. Because let me give you an example. Let's say you are driving by the area and you see your A people's house. You can just pop by with a cup of coffee like, hey, I just been in an area. Here's a cup of coffee on me. And they're like, whoa, Lana, this is awesome. Good to see you. What are you doing here? How's life? See, if you're going to pop by the same way to your C people, it's going to be super awkward. And they're going to say, mm, Lana, what the heck are you doing here? Like, how do you even no, are you Lana? How do you even know my address? It's going to be, you know, super creepy because you do not have that report and connection with them. You simply do not. And then, of course, then there are your D people. So D stands for delete. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have amazing neighbor Nancy, who's been who's been the support for you, and Nancy been referring you, supporting you, spreading your name across the neighborhood, and then Nancy's husband gets licensed. What do you think she's going to be supporting next? Yeah, unfortunately, not you. She's going to be supporting her husband. So all those efforts, all those Christmas gifts you've been providing Nancy just to uh, maintain that relationship, it's probably going to have to go. All right. Uh, and keep in mind, your C's 
Ds. So D stands for delete. Your Cs are going to become Bs, and hopefully your Bs become As. Not not everybody. You know, there are still people who are probably going to lay low and not going to refer you to the amount you would expect them to. But that's why when you organize your database and you're going to identify the strength of your people, it's going to be so much easier to communicate going forward. And then, of course, our biggest goal, even if you are working by referral, but I think it's a goal for anybody in real estate industry create raving fans. Like this is should be number goal, number one goal for all of us. And how do we create raving fans? Well, number one, we provide memorable service. Don't be a basic agent. Because you know what, my friends? Unfortunately, in the real estate industry, the point of entry is so easy that there is a bunch of basic agents. But there's no basic agents on this call because there's 47 of us and we're all learning and growing together. 48 now, actually. Uh, Post-transaction follow-up for life. This is crucial because let me explain you why. I challenge you to take the, do this exercise. When you are in a public setting, not real estate setting, let's say you are at your son's baseball game or you are in like a, some party and you're like one of the real estate professionals, have a, uh, have a small talk and have a conversation with somebody you just met. And they're like, hey, where do you live? What do you do? Oh, by the way, who was your realtor? I can guarantee you the minute you ask them who was the realtor, 50% of the people are not going to know that they're not going to remember the name. I promise you, this is how, like, this is how it is. I'll, I'll, share, I'll share with you guys a story. A few weeks ago, I was doing a tenant walkthrough on behalf of my seller, Evan. So we we're going to be selling his house. He's like, there's a tenant. Can you pop by the house and walk through, make sure like the house is in a decent order. I was like, yeah, sure. So I pull up to the house and there is this wonderful female tenant. She's super kind. She walks me through and I'm like, and I'm kind of forced to small talk because I'm not going to be like, you know, not talking with her. And I'm like, so I happen to learn that she is actually there temporarily because she's a homeowner herself and her house flooded. And I was like, okay, I'm going to ask her this question. And I was like, yeah. Oh, by the way, who was your realtor in that neighborhood? She did not remember. I'm like, bingo. So now I have this qualified homeowner who's already you know, pretty much she's either, either going to be buying or selling in the near future or a long future, but somebody I can add to my database. And this is a script I use. Hey, well, we have actually a client community here in town where we host a lot of community events and client appreciation events. Would you like to be part of it? And she's like, well, that sounds good. And then I was like, well, we actually have an event coming up in a few weeks. Would you and your family like to come and enjoy a complimentary movie night with us? She's like, oh my God, I'd love that. So I immediately break down the barrier of that uncomfortable, 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 geez, I can't even speak, uncomfortableness. You know, she's like, I'm a complete stranger, but I provided her a value, something she can enjoy with a family. And now she's going to be added to my database because her previous realtor did not do good enough job to keep in touch with her. All right. Uh, let me just check the chat. What do we have in the chat? Oh, Mike said, thank you for your husband for your service. Oh, this you're so welcome, Mike. Thank you for saying that. All right. So show them who you are. Don't be a secret agent. Friends, like there's what? How many people are on the call right now? There's 49 of us. And I hope all 49 of us have social media profiles, either it's Instagram or Facebook, where with one click, when somebody goes, checks us out, it shows we're a real estate professional, where we sell, what we do, and our pictures are professional looking enough. Because I can promise you, if somebody comes in into my world, either it's a new agent, a new vendor partner, I immediately go check out their socials. Let me see what they're all about. I mean, are, are they presented in a proper way? Do they do business actually? Or do they post pictures of their dog all the time? Now, there's a, there's a, a good way to post about dogs with funny, funny ways, like Heather um, who is a friend and she's a dog lover. But come on, we are real estate professionals and public is going to be checking you out the same way especially the wives, if you work with a lot of couples, first-time home buyers, you know, resellers, sellers, oh guys, it goes a long way. And don't be a secret agent, all right? If your profile does not indicate um, your city, that you're a real estate professional, you may not get that business. And then I want to talk to you about something very special, how to create your BNI group. Can you guys drop it uh, number one in a chat? Number one in a chat, if you were ever recur or currently are part of business networking group, I just want to see who who's currently is. Okay, Mike is. Uh, so business networking group, BNI stands for, okay. Joel, Peter, yeah, quite a bit of you guys. All right, awesome. So when I was a brand new 
in the interview process. Steve, yeah, Ellie is, this is awesome. So some of you who know how BNI works, it's not that very easy to get into. Well, when I was a brand new real estate agent, my Remax office told me, Lana, you gotta, you gotta get into one of those groups. And I tried, I tried for a freaking six, seven months and I couldn't because all those groups were preoccupied with real estate professionals who just sit there for years. Don't even probably contribute anything. Well, I hope they do. So very slow, like very early on, I kind of killed that idea that I was not going to do it. Well, this is what happened this year. This year, we have our, our own standalone building right here in Colorado Springs. I'm actually taking a call from here. This is like a little preview. One of our um, living spaces in the office right here. And I was like, well, what if, what if I create my own business networking group, but within my client community, but within my client community, let me explain you why. Because some of you are thinking, well, Lana, anyone can create a, your own business networking group and you can totally do it with other business professionals within your city. But keep in mind that most of the time they're going to be connected with other real estate professionals who they probably go on happy hours and do this and this. So you providing them that platform may win or may not, it may work or may not work. We're here. See all these people gathered in one photo on the first photo, they're all my clients. So I immediately assume they're going to be referring only me when it comes to real estate transactions. Same thing for us, for our client community. We have 500 families. We have, we have attorneys. We have chiropractor, massage therapists, um, waxing ladies. So I decided to bring everybody under one roof and introduce themselves to each other. And at the first, um, it was a two-hour engagement. The first uh, part, you kind of see it's a networking mixer. Everything was catered by Costco. Like me and my sister, we just went to Costco, got a bunch of stuff, snacks, drinks, uh, little finger foods. And then for the next hour, I brought everybody downstairs for a formal portion. And of course, I initiated and I hosted it where we all went around and they introduced themselves and asked, please tell us about your business and what's your number one goal for this year. And you know what? It was so heartwarming. Um, everybody exchanged each other's information. Everybody started following each other. And there was even some tears shed. And uh, I'm also a firm believer in tangible items. So everyone who came left with a book or two books that I gave them preference. Some of them took two. And it was word of mouth marketing and also a little bit of help of social media. So see, when you start differentiating, differentiating, differ. Sorry, friends, I cannot speak today. Um, when you start being different and doing things like this for your client community, they become the raver, raving fans that will never, ever go away. Because you know what? Your competition, my competition is not doing that. They're not thinking strategic enough and not big enough. All right. Now I want to share with you. Let me just get a sip of water. Now, when I, now I want to share with you, friends, the platforms to communicate with your database. All right. So Facebook is still number one for me. It's still number one. It has been number one for the longest time um, because Facebook is still that two-way platform. And by the two-way platform, I mean, let's say I'm at the real estate conference and I meet Siri and I say, Siri, would love to connect with Facebook with you. I just send her a friend request right here. And then I stand next to her so she can see my friend request and she accepts it. We immediately connect in each other's worlds, immediately connected. See, the Instagram is number three because if I meet Siri at the real estate conference and I follow her, if she does not follow me back, there is not going to be that connection. She will never know who I am and we're never going to be in each other's worlds. Also, Facebook is number one platform where people share personal shit. Okay. Let me give you an example. When somebody's sick, somebody's going through the flu, um, somebody's pet died, somebody's loved one died, somebody's going through the hardship or happy they share about it on Facebook because Facebook in their mind is still a platform for their family and friends. And what do you think me and my team do? We're always present, we're always watching. And whenever there's a special announcement of some kind of sort, sort or so, some kind of sort, we screenshot it, I send it to my client care manager and she knows exactly what to do. If it's a sickness announcement, they may get a um, little soup delivery or vitamin C. If it's uh, celebratory, they may get flowers. And that happens fast within 24 to 48 hours. Okay. Um, and that's why we do little touches like this for our client community, our sphere that no one else does. And that's why we constantly stay top of mind. Of course, monthly newsletter. Guys, can you just share with me in the chat uh, if you are actually sending out monthly newsletter to your clients? 
monthly newsletter. It can be through your CRM or it can be through, we use MailChimp. MailChimp is super user-friendly, very affordable. Uh, let's see. Okay, how many people we have in the chat? Yeah, so Windy uses outbound, outbound engine. Olivia looks like brand team is using. Uh, can I share a copy of mine? Yeah, Peter, if you DM me directly, I can probably share. Yes, MailChimp, MailChimp, yep. Yeah, awesome. So monthly newsletter, uh, super user-friendly. We all should be using it. Oops, hold on, let me go back. Honestly, we all should be using it. Um, and what do we put? What do we put in our monthly newsletter? Well, most of the time, because typically we are either preparing for a next client appreciation event. So we start marketing there. Uh, we also show them the social proof of the previous client event. We're very big on client events. You guys will, um, I, will I will share with you why. Um, so they see what we are about to host. They see what we hosted. So for people who did not attend it, there's a little bit, a little bit of FOMO. And then, of course, local happenings in Colorado Springs area. Here's five camps for the kids. Just a little bit add, add value to our client community. And then, of course, we um, show our active listings, too, because let's not forget, here's your value, but we're still in real estate and we're going to promote our, our clients' listings. And then BombBomb, Bomb, I want to emphasize the BombBomb. BombBomb Bomb Bomb is a very user-friendly platform, especially if you're trying to get consistent uh, with video marketing. Funny story, I paid for BombBomb Bomb a few years ago when they upsold me and I bought about one year subscription and I didn't use it once. And now when I'm finally ready to start video marketing to my clients and my sphere, I'm like, well, I'm going to have to re-sign for this um, app. And uh, why BombBomb? Bomb? It's very user-friendly. You can be in front of one screen, press record button, record your video, and then it comes in a, once again, very user-friendly format to whoever you send it out. And on their end, it comes like a like little funny meme thing. that They're kind of like forced to press to play. Um, so definitely look into BombBomb Bomb for video communication. I have a lot of friends who send me Bomb Bombs and I always watch them because it just looks super cool, super cool. All right, so moving on, moving on. So your secret tool, your secret tool is a private client Facebook group. And I want to ask you friends another question. Please like drop number two in the chat if you actually have a private Facebook client group for your client community. We have a San Diego Rockstar agent. Okay, Peter, Peter has a client group. Come on guys, there's what, 47, 48 of us today? Nope, hold on. Yeah, Olivia and Siri just started one. Awesome, all right. Well, we all should be having one of these groups because look, full disclosure, we're all part of some kind of Facebook group ran by somebody. Um, and there are some good groups, some kind of groups that are a waste of time. But this kind of group will give you the power to communi communicate to your client community, your sphere accordingly, okay? The communication that's gonna go on here is not gonna be seen by others. Because remember, I have 5,000 friends on Facebook. Whatever I post here, I don't necessarily have to be shown to to my other real estate friends or, you know, a, like a C and D people who I probably should be deleting out of my uh, out of my sphere and whatnot. But this gives you, number one, it's free. All the Facebook tools are free. And whatever you post here, as long as the people invite and people are invited and accept the invitation, everything you post will be seen by them unless they decide to tap out and remove themselves from the group. And now we have on and off 900 members. Who do we add here? Past, present, future clients. Uh, some vendors, not a lot of vendors, our preferred vendors who are actually with us for a long amount of time. And then let's say if somebody... Like so that lady, the rental lady, I mean, after talking to her, she was abandoned by her real estate agent. So I was like, yeah, why don't you, I added her here. I immediately friended her and added her here. You can also also send out the link. You don't have to friend somebody, but if you send them out the, send the link and they uh, join themselves, you can do that too. But I like friending people on Facebook because I would like to be in their world and I want to see them. I want, I want to be in their world and I want them to be in my world, see what I'm doing. And here's some examples of what we're posting. So excitement pre or post client events so allergy summer bash is five days away so exciting check out the giant inflatables so you I start posting little teasers of what to come uh so you're not bad engagement 71 likes 33 comments here this is a from march 23 this year we were preparing to host our client appreciation branch 
And this is another teaser. And see, this is 23 comments, uh, 23 likes, 18 comments, but then out of 900, the post reach was 300 people, which is not bad. Also, if you wanna to try to make a little bit interactive, people love interacting on such posts. So here we have a poll. Um, we're hosting movie appreciation client event here in a few weeks in June. And I could not decide on which movie because we have a cartoon movie, we have Transformers, we have Flash. And I did a little poll and that poll reached 471 people, 60 votes, three comments, very good engagement. And then also people like to, you know, kind of participate in like, what would you spend it on? So you have $5,000 to improve your home. See 55 comments and that you make this very, very interactive, very, very interactive. And one thing that we do not post here that we do not post is just listed open house because your people already know your real estate business. That's not what this, what this is for. This is more of a community. This is more for them. So I encourage you after this call, please start your own client Facebook group add everybody, announce to everybody like, hey, I'm doing this, I would love your support. And then whatever you wanna post, you can also bring in somebody to co-post with you. If you're a team leader or if you're a busy solo producer, bring in your assistant, kind of divide and conquer responsibilities of posting in this group with your assistant. But this is yours, no one, no one can get in unless you approve it. And it becomes constant, very, very effective communication tool for your client community. All right, some of the things I wanna share with you, but before we go further, I wanna give credit when the credit is due, because if I'll tell you all these great working referral systems are all from me, no. For a very long time, I have been part of the Buffini community and the Brian Buffini has been mentor of mine for, for probably the first four years when I was starting out as a brand new agent. And see, Brian's thing is calls, notes, and power buys, and then there's client events too. And uh, I'm gonna let you guys in a little secret. So when I was, starting my business and becoming of who I am right today, um, calls was not going to be the way I generate my, my business. Yeah, Mike Buffini is a boss. He, he truly is. Fellow immigrant and such a low-key dude, you know. Um, but calls was not going to be the way I was going to be making my business grow. And I'll tell you why, because I still have an accent. And even up to this point, when I have to talk to somebody on the phone and or even convert a lead, my, my worst accent comes out. Like you guys think I speak with accent that there is an even much worse accent than this. And I start losing the sale. So I quickly discovered that face-to-face -face is gonna be the way I will be doing business. And I did my share of notes. I did my share of pop buys. And then we decided to just take the client event concept and put it on steroids. But I wanna talk to you about a little bit about handwritten notes. So birthday and home anniversary mailers. Some of you may be like, this is so cheesy. Does this really work? It does work. And I'll, I'll tell you why. So first of all, we track all the birthdays and home anniversary mailers through the CRM, okay? Uh, that <clears throat> typically is being taken on. We had manual assistant manually call and post every closing, gather that information and put it in CRM. Now we have a questionnaire coming out and going out um, after closing to every client. So it's like, hey, if you want to be part of our client appreciation community and blah, 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 please fill this out within Google format and they fill it out and that's how we track. And see, it's nothing too crazy. It's just a uh, simple card, quick, quick little greeting. Dear Jason, happy birthday. Have a coffee on us, blah, blah, blah. Um, of course, team photos or your photo individually so they don't forget who you are. And then little cheesy well over referrals from Amazon sticker. And this is all it is, it's $5 gift cards. $5 gift cards, my friends. And some of you, I know what you guys are thinking. You're like, mm -hmm. does this shit work? Yes, it does. Here's a living proof. And we do this on a constant basis, years, years, years in a row. And here's Helga saying, it's our closing anniversary. Thanks, Lord. You're still thinking of us four years later. Yeah, you're so welcome, Helga. You know, Miss Ruth is saying, Lana Rodriguez and her team, thank you for happy anniversary home card. It's been three years. And where do they post all this? They post this most of the time either on client group, on our client group, on their on their social media. And this is gold when your people start posting things about you on their social media. Who do you think sees it? All their friends, all their friends. Because guess what? Other real estate professionals is not do, not doing this for their friends. So when the time comes and they their friends are going to be looking for real estate professional, they're going to reach out to Ruth and to Helga and say, hey. 
is your Lana Rodriguez real estate agent legit? Should I use her? And it's going to be a yes, because I constantly remain present and did the work. See, Tone Tone, it's not her name, actually. Another year older, another year thankful for Lana and her team. Woo. And then Becky's saying, super awesome surprise. Thank you for being part of the ownership. And then the super cool post is Michael and his partner. They actually went to New York and redeemed our Starbucks gift cards. We gave them in New York and gave us a tag. See, this is like so awesome. And friends, if you have not been doing this, please, please, please gather all this information. It's going to take a little bit of uh, leg work, you know, some consistency in a few days to sit down, but you can say, Hey, I'm launching client appreciation program. I would love to get this, um, you know, get your information from you. Uh, uh, Ashley is asking how much of a GC value do you give on average? Ashley, can you just tell me what GC uh, stands for? Because my brain is not working. Gift card. Okay. Yeah. I was like, GC, I was talking about Grant Cardone. Just kidding, guys. It's a, it's a Tuesday morning. Ha. Huh. Yeah. No, $5. $5. That's it. Have a, have a treat on us. Because typically, you know, small, medium Starbucks coffee, uh, $5. $5. But also, um, for what we started doing this year, we're testing it out. And this is, let me just try to explain it so you guys can understand. So for home universities, we're still sending the Starbucks cards because we know it really works. But you know, it's pricey. We order them on Amazon. They come in batches and it's already prepaid, prepaid amount. Um, so we partnered up. We have Sasquatch cookies in Colorado Springs area. And we went to the, one of the local business owners there and we say, hey, we want to design flyers with a cookies from us on behalf of our team. And we designed these flyers and we're sending, we're sending them out to the clients and they get redeemed and paid for only when they come in. Meaning they have my account information that the cookie local cookie shop has my account information. And let's say uh, the client gets a flyer but never redeems it or brings it in and never pay for it. So that's another genius model where you actually can just invest into designing the flyers, partner up with a local shop or local bakery, whatever, and have this agreement with them. And it will work very, very effectively where you don't pay and uh, don't spend like hundreds of dollars for these gift cards up front. So something kind of to think about. Um, yeah, Bo is saying in and out gift cards work great for these also. In and out, we have one in and out in Cloud Springs. The lines are like crazy there. But yeah, something like Chick-fil-A can also work too. But anyway, let's move on friends. All right, so let's talk about client events. Uh, can you guys share with me just in a chat who actually hosts client events like on a regular basis and regular basis like once a quarter, once a year, twice a year. How many of you currently host client events? There's 47 of us. There will be some people who host client events. Anyone? Anyone? Yes, Peter is. Okay, cool. Eric is. Cool. Anyone else? Don't tell me that it's only two of you. Yeah, Houston, Texas, living car, Carl. Yep, twice a year. All right, Wendy hasn't hosted one since COVID. Okay, I understand that. Um, during the COVID time, we had to shift. I'll, sh I'll show you guys what we did uh, through COVID, how we shifted real quick, because we had to cancel one of our biggest events. But here's a photo of me with the same uh, good old Remax balloon, because when you are a Remax agent, you bring that balloon everywhere for your marketing efforts. Um, and this is... Me, uh, pregnant, five or six months pregnant with our firstborn. And this is what we did. So for the longest time, remember, I was doing handwritten notes and I was doing the pub by deliveries. I'll pub by for some of you who does not sure what it is. You go to Starbucks, you buy like 10 of these and you go pub by your favorite A plus clients and like, hey, I was thinking of you. Happy summer. And they're like, oh, this is so awesome. Lana. Thank you. But pub buys are very time consuming. They're very, very effective, but very time consuming. It can take you up to a few days to um, touch everybody just driving around. But the big aha moment for me was in that particular photo, we rented out a small room of 40 people in the local Brazilian joint here in Colorado Springs. It's called Tucanos. And no, it's nothing as fancy as Fogo de Chao or anything like that. We don't have anything like, like that here, but it was decent. It's a buffet style. And um, who did I invite? I was a uh, you know, brand new real estate agent was my first year. I had some clients, some sphere. We invited some of my husband's coworkers and there was a uh, 40 people. 
And I'm standing there looking at this room. I was like, wow. So all these people are happy. They're well taken care of. They're fed. And I talked to each and one of them. I did my circles because I think I did not eat or like most of most of the events when we host, I just stand there and I host and I greet. I never get to enjoy the event because it's not for me. It's for my client community. And the big aha was, I was like, well, so you can actually bring people to you instead of you going to them and driving around for hours, delivering goods, and they still have a good time. So from that moment now on to now, see, we started growing client community where Lana dresses up as Elsa and my other coworker dressed up as in a hot dog costume for Halloween up to the moment where our entire team brought their families together and the kids and we all co-worked um, you know, the, the Santa event for our client community. So it becomes a little bit of a tradition. It gets very, 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 very excited. And you can execute that starting from a very small level into the bigger level. And uh, to Wendy's comment, I think it was, hold on. I think it was, um, yeah, Wendy who said she hasn't hosted anything since things, uh, since, uh, since 2020. We had a big uh, client appreciation Easter brunch that we had to cancel because everything was shutting down. And my, I'm a visionary at heart. And my mind was like, doo, 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 doo. what should we do? So I went to Costco and I walked around and I stumbled across these four pizzas. So it's a frozen pack of four pizza. I think back, uh, back a few years ago, it was like $8.99. I think it's like $9.99 or $10.99 at this point. And we bought 285 of frozen pizzas in 2020 and delivered to our clients' doors. Now, it was an RSVP endeavor um, because we have 500 families and we asked, hey, we're planning to do this. Would you like pizza to be delivered to you? Because remember, it was quarantine time. It was just starting. So some people are like, no, thank you. We're good. But 285 out of 500 said yes. So this is me and the team back then. We were like loading up. And then we did the same uh, pizza campaign actually the following year for back to school. And say so people say, hey, thank you for making life easier. Thank you, Lana Rodriguez, to your amazing team. We had fun in the park with great pizza. You're so welcome. Because once again, friends, it's all about those client touches and all about staying top of heart, top of mind of your client community. And of course, once again, friendly reminder, we're not a voluntary organization. We are really professional. And that's why we, stop, we, we slap little friendly stickers saying, hey, who's buying or selling next? That's it. That's it. Now, my friends, this is uh, the slideshow for you to take a picture of. Uh, 2023 events to consider. Now, I do not expect you to guys execute all of these events. This is just simple ideas, super simple ideas of what possibly can be done for the rest of the year. And I'm, favorite, I'm highlighting my favorite four. Uh, if I would have to pick and choose from all of this list, these four will be my number ones. So Easter event, it's Easter past, but Easter event, it's always something to do, uh, like great to do for your community. Summer bash, we decided to do movies instead of the summer bash, but you can do anything, ice cream party, um, anything, pumpkin patch. Believe it or not, out of this entire freaking list, pumpkin patch is our biggest uh, attendance rate yet. It's crazy. It's crazy, but I'll tell you why. It's because something happens uh, emotionally where people are like so done with summer. The kids are going back to school, so they put in their flannels. And pumpkin patches for us are huge. We pack anywhere from six to seven hundred people every time, every time. And uh, I know most of you are located in California, and we also have friends from across across the different states. But I'm sure you guys, whatever you are, you have local pumpkin patch owners, start conversations conversations with them early, like maybe right now, hey, this is who I am, what I do. I would like to bring you my client appreciation event. We would like to have a private space for uh, from anywhere from like two to four hours. Will you work with us? And typically they work with you on pricing. They work with you on food costs. And for us, uh, our pumpkin patch event cost is $10 per person. And what do they get? They get like a, a nice little barbecue sandwiches or hot dogs for the kids provided by the pumpkin patch place. And they all got a little pumpkin to take home. This is very, very good event to think of. And then of course, photos with Santa. For the longest time, we were giving, uh, giving out pies because are you even a realtor if you're not giving out pies for Thanksgiving? And see our client community, I mean, they're lovely people, but they're not dumb. They know that we are getting our pies from... Costco or Sam's Club. So our attendance rate drops for the pies. And my, I'm thinking like, oh my God, I need to bring my people back. I don't like that people are not coming. So we added pictures with Santa 
that looks so freaking real. So it's a kind of a double event. You come get your pie, you take a picture with Santa, pictures are taken by a professional photographer, you get it on digits. Um, and then you can use it for your social media. You can use it for, let's say, for um, your holiday cards. And you don't have to stand in a crazy line in the mall. Because if you're a parent and you ever taken your kid to the mall or Dick Sporting goes to take a picture, my kid will never make it to the end of the line. We always had to leave first. So when you start providing experiences like this to your client community in some shape or form, you're going to differentiate yourself so much ahead of than, than um, your competition. And once again, this is examples. Let me just check the chat real quick. Yeah, I have somebody laughing. Alex is laughing with me. Good. All right. So once again, examples, because if you're listening to me right now and you're feeling overwhelmed, please don't. You can start small and work your way up. You can even start with one event a year, as long as you start, because there's real estate professionals in your market who will never, never, ever do anything like this because they're lazy and they have not been on this class. <laughs> Just kidding. But here's an example of a trunk or treat. Trunk or treat in the off uh, in the parking lot of our office space downtown and it's small but intimate gathering once again it doesn't have to be big and fancy we have vendors we, we typically have a dj for like uh, some tunes and vibes we have vendors who we work with on annual basis all i ask them hey please decorate a trunk and bring a candy i always bring candy myself as well to make sure there's enough for everybody uh and they have a great time. I also market that our trunk treats are safe and they're uh, sensory friendly. Very, very important. Here we have Easter Bunny guy. Uh, it's actually one of my agent's teenage sons wearing a costume from Amazon that we bought for hundred bucks. Okay. It doesn't have to be professional actor paid. Now we had professional Easter Bunny hired and one time he came drunk to the event yeah, I cannot make this up. So after that, I'm like, I'm going to work internally and not going to be dealing with the craziness like this. And this is a picture of me and our agents from a year ago when Jurassic World Dominion came out, which hosted a movie premiere. As you guys can see, one kid is happy, another kid is frightened. But the, the experience overall was amazing. And my friends, this is another slide to take a picture of, please. If some of you are on this call are and are super excited on starting your real estate client appreciation <clears throat> events system and or you're already executing event events check out these five touches very very important a lot of friends of mine they hear me speak and present on this and they're like okay i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it and then they do it they call me like no one showed up and i had like 10 20 people show up i'm like but did you do these five touches very important let me explain you why so create, create event, invite in your private client Facebook group with Google RSVP sheet or Eventbrite. So we, so Facebook provides the opportunity to create a Facebook event within the group because your people are already there, you create an event, you invite everybody. So then what happens that Facebook automatically sends friendly reminders on your behalf to everyone invited. So remember automation is key. So that's where your first automation comes from. Second, I'm a firm believer in tangible items. Tangible is something you can, open, feel, touch, and we always print and mail event invita invitations in a timely manner. And I'll show you guys examples how they look like here in a second, because it's very important for me to, for somebody to open this invitation and look at it and remember what I'm hosting and who I am. And those are very colorful designs, I'll show you guys in a minute. So then most of the time, our people are very, very visual people. All right, because just like you and I are visual people, we get bombarded all the time with ads and social media spams, our clients too. So when they see, okay, one invitation, two invitations from you, be like, mm, I mean, I don't know, Lana is hosting something, it may be cool. But when they see a video come through from Lana standing on this pumpkin patch, you know, recording herself in, and you give them expectations, where are you at, what to expect and what to come, They've been like, wow, this actually looks pretty cool. I think I want to attend this with my family. Last but not least, we have email to everybody in newsletter format. Um, because some of, the, some of your people, some of your clients may not be on Facebook group. They may not be, um, you know, they may, they may not even check mail. We have people who check mail like once a month. I'm like, oh, you're missing out on a lot of things. But then when you, they maybe monitor their emails more accordingly. And of course, 
I recommend personal touch always and always. Um, for so for somebody like brand real estate team, you guys have lots of clients. So you need to automate that a little bit for us too. We have 500 families. So I cannot physically call or text 500 families in one setting. So we use automated voicemail. So you'd use automated texts. Um, but for some of you solo producers or people who have small teams with smaller databases, maybe divide and conquer, sit down there and for, for, a, few, for a few hours or for a few days, invite everybody personally. It's going to go a long way, long way. Because people will feel obligated, like, okay, Siri, send me a message. I feel like I need to show up right now. And bonus point, every time you host something, anything, please make sure you have a photographer or videographer on site, or at least somebody who's going to be capturing social moments, um, because then you're going to be able to repurpose that content and show to the, all the people who did not come because they maybe had little trust in your event abilities. You're like, wow, we had a great time. Thanks for attending. And then people who did not come are going to show up at the next event because they're going to have a FOMO. Uh, Zila Zela is saying, I love these ideas. You're amazing, Lana. Oh, you're so sweet. Um, okay, Tulane, uh, Tulane Joseph. I hope I'm, so what will be uh, your top most effective steps we should take if we're never done? Um, and if you're a new agent. Okay, all right. We will be... Yeah, Giselle, I'm sure there's gonna be a recording. You should get together. Um, yeah, there should be a recording in your email. Yep, recording. And friends, I'm also available. If you're on this call, uh, let's connect on social media. And if you have any questions, I need any specifications or clarification, I'm always available. Send me a DM and I will always respond. Maybe a little too late response, but I always respond. Um, yeah, so Tulane, in your case, uh, the most effective steps like identify what do you want to host and when and who are you going to invite to. So that's why I would organize your database first, because maybe you have a bunch of ladies who are A pluses and you can gather them for painting night with a twist, right? Um, and if you're a new agent, like your sphere is your estate. I'm a firm believer. Um, it may not be a personal clients who you're inviting because you don't have any clients yet but it may be your best friends who are going to be your supporters. Not friends with licensed real estate husbands, but you start kind of gathering around them and you start, you start building that trust, trust factor that, hey, I'm a brand new professional, but I know what I'm doing. I'm a good person. And it's going to start growing up from there because if they're around you and they see you doing good things, they're going to go and tell their friends. And also number one goal for all of us, our people need to remember we are real estate agents. If they forget and they ask somebody else or if they go to Zillow to ask for look for real estate advice, we're not doing a good enough job. But let's revisit on this. All right, friends. So please, 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 event invitation system that works. These five touches are crucial, but they work. And this is how our invitation system looks like. Once again, they're big, they're bright, they're bold, and they're a little cheesy. But look, this is two things are going to happen. People are going to open up them in the mail and they're either going to throw them in a trash or they're going to slap them on a fridge. Hopefully they're going to end up in the fridge uh, with a little magnet on. And what's going to happen that every time they walk by, they're going to see, uh-huh, uh, Lana's event. I'm not, I don't want to go. I don't go. Okay, maybe it looks awesome. But they're going to be reminded of who I am, what I do, and what I'm hosting regardless if they attend or they don't attend. This is an example of our Easter Appreciation Brunch looks approximately like this. This is this happened right this year. So we send this out and RSVP is uh, via Eventbrite, okay? Via Eventbrite. And uh, good lesson learned a few years ago, because what do we do? We're like Nazis when it comes to RSVP right now is because a few years ago, we're hosting something and we ran out of food. And it was very uncomfortable situation when we ran out of food because I was like, yeah, come on, come on. We'll see you there. No RSVP, nothing. And then we had to order some pizza and pizza arrived by the time the event was over. It was very embarrassing because I want my events ran properly. I want everybody happy, fed. Um, so that was not the event. So after that, for the longest time, we were using Google links as a RSVP platform. And now we use Eventbrite, super user-friendly. So this is an example of the event for the movies, um, movie day coming up June 17th. Um, we are actually hosting three movies. So Elemental for the little ones, Transformers and Flash. So yeah, kind of cool, very excited. We're not, you typically would dress up in costumes, not this time, which is gonna be wearing our work hard behind shirts. 
because elemental costumes are kind of weird and I don't think I will ever use them. So I don't expect anybody to buy them. And another little trick that you can have up your sleeve every time you want to do another touch for your client community, go prepay a Starbucks code uh, online and you can do anywhere from like 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks. For this particular campaign, we did $500. And then you take the code, you design it within your flyer that you want to send out and, hey, happy Mother's Day. We did this for Mother's Day this year and for International Women's Day. A little picture of me and the uh, mom ladies on my team and say, hey, please have a treat on us. And it works very effectively. Most of your clients are going to be so appreciative and they're going to resume within reasonable charges. So like anywhere from like five to 10 bucks. And this is our client, Dana. She's a military spouse. Oh, no, sorry. She's a military, active duty military. So she gave us a shout out on her stories. But keep in mind, with this kind of platform, you cannot track who's charging where and what. Because the way this uh, promo ended, somebody charged $70 in one of the local Starbucks stores and maxed out entire amount. Now, once again, 80% of the people charge very reasonably. They're appreciative of what you're offering them. And there's going to be some people who are going to take advantage of it. So that's just another kind of like just thing to keep in mind. All right. Now, very important because some of you are thinking, I want to start executing client events. How can I do this? Or how can I get a little bit of help? Well, you need to start thinking who's going to be your client care team. All right. Who will help plan and execute your 2023 client experiences? Now, see, for me, friends, when I was running and gunning as a solo producer, it was just me and my husband. My husband was active duty for 11, 12 years, and on his nights and weekends, he was helping me to build my business. And we had a very good understanding that it, it was going to be him till um, end of 2016. I came to him, and I was like, I cannot do this, Brian. I need help. And of course, he told me, no, you need to get more organized or wake up even earlier. And I'm like, Brian, I already operate like on two or three hours of sleep. So I don't think I can do that. So that's how I started team now. Uh, so start thinking who's going to be helping you, because if you think you can do this on your own, you, you might. But most of the time, our days get very, very busy, bombarded with things. And uh, even if you're a team leader, team member, solo producer, uh, but we are all salespeople. We need to be brand, expand, marketing. So you, I, I highly suggest you start looking and thinking who can help you. Maybe you have an assistant. So you need to bring your assistant into this and kind of strategize with her. Maybe it's a team member. Maybe it's your partner agent or buyer's agent, uh, or maybe another agent on your team. Uh, so I highly suggest looking into who's going to be your person to ex execute this together. Also, let's talk about leveraging your vendors and asking for support. Of course, there is lender, tile, inspector, insurance rep, and roofer. Um, instead of Colorado, lender can pay up to 50% of the marketing budget for the event. Instead of Colorado, wherever you add, you need to do your own due diligence and see how much lender can pay up to there. Um, our title reps don't pay anything. Apparently in Colorado, they legally can pay for stuff. Uh, your inspector, insurance rep, and roofers, don't expect them to contribute a lot. It's probably going to be like a couple hundred bucks here and there. Maybe they're going to bring some prizes for uh, donation, or maybe they provide you lunch, like a pay for lunch. But lender is probably the be the first person who I would go and ask for support. But very important, very important tactic. Do not do this via text message or don't do it via email. It needs to be in person conversations only. All the reason why is because when you ask for financial support, the stakes are very, very high and it can be misinterpreted very, very fast. How do I know that? Because it's happened to me. A um, few years ago, I went to some seminar or conference where I, I met a lot of real estate professionals where the vendors contri were contributing a lot towards their organization. And I went back home, talked to my husband. I was like, we're not getting shit. Like all those professionals across this, the, the country are like having this competent and this. So we designed this little tier program, like a silver, bronze, and a gold tier, whatever, for our for our partner, vendor partners. And we sent it out. We sent it out to the first one was our home inspector. And the guy had been working with us for the last few years. And that particular year, he did $50,000 just off our team because we were exclusively recommending him. He did very, very generously. And within 24 hours, that relationship was dead between us and him. Because as he took the idea of us asking for like little sponsorship or whatever, he took this out of proportion so much, it got really, really ugly. So it was a good lesson learned from my, on my behalf. So my suggestion, if you want to ask 
whoever you want to ask for commitment and support, take them out to coffee, lunch, dinner, tell them, hey, I attended this, Lana, uh, this, uh, Lana chick was talking to me about this program. I'm so inspired. I want to do this. Um, you need to explain them why you want to do this and how it's going to benefit them. And then you ask for financial contribution. Okay, because they need to see a bigger picture and they need to see how the bigger picture, uh, how they are part of that bigger picture. Uh, and uh, it just depends how your lender is structured. Our guy always has to take something by his marketing department and then we get approval from their corporate side and then we get little payoffs here and there. Um, maybe your lender is an independent broker. He can make a decision right on the spot. But very like highly suggest you start uh, you know, you start looking for their wide support partners because there are so many friends of mine still in the industry who are not getting any support. And I don't think it's really right because a joint effort. If you're sending them business, have them support you in some way. And um, let me see how much time we have. We have like three minutes, four minutes. If I get kicked off, please don't kick me off. Let me just finish this. Uh, this is the last slide. So what to mail? Because some of you on this call, you're like, okay, events may not be my vibe. Mailers may not be my vibe, but I want to talk to you about this mailer, okay? Oh, three, three ways you can structure it. Number one, mail your uh, the market analysis for the property for a client. You can do it through Chime. You can do it automated through CRM. I think Property Shark or something like that is also an option. You can also do a screenshot of their home value in Zillow and mail it, email it to them this way or send it via text. Hey, just so your Zilla value, what are your thoughts? Just jump, jump start conversations. You can also do manual uh, CMAs and mail it to them. It's going to be a very great response rate because keep in mind, market has shifted. We're all, all wondering what the heck is going on. You think your clients and past clients are not wondering what the heck is happening with their property values? Oh, yes, they are. Yes, they are. Uh, so mailer number two, year or quarter interview. Let's say if you want to send them like lolly jolly, happy mailer. Hey, within the last, uh, last year, we moved brokerages. We got this, this, blah, blah, blah. It's kind of super chill, super easy way to just kind of let, let them know what's going on. But the money mailer would be the letter of the heart. For the last few years, um, my former coach was telling me, she's like, you need to do this. You need to do this. I'm like, what am I going to do? What am I going to put in that letter? My life is fine. There's like nothing crazy except 2021. 2021 was a, it was just a crazy year. There was a lot of sicknesses in our, in our household. And my husband who never gets sick, like almost died from COVID, like the guy's 35 and like what, um, that's when we began a uh, discovery journey of autism with my son. So I just put it on paper and this is an example of this letter. I'm also going to share it in the chat as soon as I'm done presenting. So you guys can have an idea how it looks like. And you see, there is no branding, there is no call to action, there is no LRG logo, and it's simply just words of me expressing and sharing sincerely about 2021. Uh, added a couple of pictures, picture of me and my kids and my family and Brian over there being sick, and we sent it out in December with um, in December 2021. We sent it out with uh, our group holiday photo so holiday group photo with our logo and branding and then this and i was like you know what we'll see probably no one's going to care you will be surprised what kind of effect this caused on our client community so people who even haven't worked with me like personally because you know we have a team and clients who work with team members now they were calling me they were messaging me dming me texting me and they're like wow Thank you so much for sending this. You have no idea. I resonated, blah, blah, blah. So very powerful tool. And especially if you haven't been communicated with your client community for a long time, or let's say you're going through some changes, but do it. Now, it may not be the year for you to do it this year because nothing crazy happened. Maybe it's going to be next year, but keep this powerful tool definitely in, in your mind because it's going to be a very powerful connecting tool between you and your client community. And of course, friends, I'm going to leave you here today well, leave you, because I'm not leaving yet. I'm going to stay on to answer some questions. With my favorite quote, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that's all I got for you, friends. Please, let's connect. Let's keep in touch. I would love to hear from you. I would love to keep in touch um, when you host something. And let me see. Let's see what we have on chat. Uh, yeah. Oh, Mike, you're welcome. We said that happened to them too. Thank you, Lana. Um, oh, you're so welcome. 
Yeah, friends, but I'm here if you guys have any questions, concerns, if somebody, uh, can you guys like, did anyone found this helpful or excited about implement some of the things they learned? They're like, no. Oh, Travis says, <laughs> they're like, no, that's a bunch of baloney. Well, As Alex says, yes, friend team on series ops team i'm looking at this and i'm like here we go we're going to implement all of this we're already rachel and i uh who she's part of our culture committee at the brand we were both like okay we're ready strapping in but for all awesome for all the many ideas. things when i get back right that uh, lana's uh -huh. saying we should do we know how it goes <laughs> no Lana, I just, I just, again, wanted to thank you for this. I, I want to just close with a quick little story here too, um, or if you guys have any other questions. Um, and then Lana put in the chat, it looks like she put her letter in there that she's sharing here too. Um, and then this will be recorded. So if anybody wants to watch it back, but I wanted to share a quick little story. When Lana and I first met, um, we were getting to know each other. And then I had my birthday in January and I was sitting in the office talking to a couple uh, of agents on the team. And all of a sudden this guy walked in and he had these, um, he had these flowers and he had a card and it was the day after my birthday, actually, he had these flowers and a card and I was sitting there and he was like, you know, where's Siri and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, that's me. And then I'm sitting here thinking, okay, who's giving me flowers. Right. And I opened up the card and it was a photo that I had posted on my birthday on Facebook that Lana, you must've just taken off of, off of Facebook and she basically wished me a happy birthday and sent me some flowers, right? And this, I mean, we were getting to know each other more and more, right? And so how special was that, that I had something that was taken off of my Facebook post that she literally had the card made with that photo with flowers delivered the next day. Like it was the most memorable gift that I got. And sorry for anybody else that gave me anything, but literally it was the most memorable gift that I got because she made it so special and I didn't expect it. Right. And so I just, to me, that was like just such a big indicator of first of all, her giving nature, but also just how she pays attention to all those details and, and those things matter. So that's, that's my story with Lana. That's a great story. Yeah. yeah. You're like, while we're getting to know each other, it sounds like we're like a dating. <laughs> we, I know we were dating. Now we're yeah. together. <laughs> no, but ultimately, uh, we have like a lot of like Jesse, Jesse Peters from Canada and Glenda Baker. If you ever heard them speak live, they are big on surprise and delight. Yeah. They're big on surprise and delight. So, however, it's going to be surprise and delight for you. See, for me, in my case, um, I think it was Siri's birthday. And maybe I was like, oh shit, it's her birthday today. And it's too late for me to send her something, but I'm gonna send her something tomorrow. And uh, it was edible arrangements, super convenient. Um, as long as you post the night off or the morning off, and then, okay, how am I going to surprise and delight her? Because I'm assuming she's a very busy woman and very popular. So she probably already got like some flowers or candy or something. I'm just assuming, right? So I was like, okay, I need to think, think, think. Okay, I'm going to take this photo of her and put it on the card because I don't think anyone done that for her. And that was a bingo, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that was it, right? There was just something special with you recognizing that. And what's funny is you mentioned Jesse. So if you guys don't follow Jesse, he's with Real. Um, he did like a, you know, a video on my birthday and had sang this big song and everything. He sent me this, this video of him basically wishing me a happy birthday. And that was super special too, because he specifically sang it, sent it over to me. So yeah, all those things are just that little extra special touch that people really, really love and appreciate and remember. Yeah, Jesse's thing is video. Um, and he said, like in his keynote, he shares examples of the video. And he it doesn't have to be like mani manicured where you're like all dressed and makeup on. No, he like doing yard work or he's sweaty and he's like, hey, just thinking of you. Uh, but here's another tip. Like do, if you decide to do birthday videos, please do it personalized way where you actually have, hey Siri, this is Lana wishing you a birthday. Because on my birthday, which was in January 13th, if anyone's still like, no, just kidding. Uh, somebody sent me not only one, but two videos were recorded. I think they sent it in the morning and maybe they forgot and said it again. And it was like a mock video that probably they, they just have it saved in their phone. Um, you know, like just for like, like you send it out. No, don't do that. Cause like, I was like, okay, like I see what you're doing. That's cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, make it special to them for sure. So yeah. Lana, well, does anybody have any other questions for Lana? No. So while you're on the phone, the, there's a letter of the heart example in the chat, and there is also Lana's takeaways. And by takeaways, there is um just a client event ideas and the five steps. So just something for you guys to download and have it handy as you guys hopefully will execute, execute at least one client event in the near future. And it's so fun, like seeing people like having a good time, especially that your people, right? Because everybody wants to be part of something. Like I'm a real broker because I want to be part of cool community. I want to feel the connection. Your clients the same way, your spirit the same way. But when you become the host of that, it gives you that additional power. Yeah. And if you want to be connected even more, Siri and I with Katie Day and Rachel Novak are hosting Ascent Real Estate Conference in Denver, 23rd, 24th. We would love to see you. We would love to see you. It's going to be a good time. I, I just put it in the chat. My team knows because we've been pushing it out. So, and if you're not on the team and you're on here and you want to get a discount on the tickets, reach out to Lana or myself on Instagram and we can get you a code. So just reach yeah. out and follow us. Yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's not going to be, I think we're going to be able to get to know everybody on a very personal level. We're expecting like a little under hundred people. Uh, the venue is super dope. Clearly I chose it. Just kidding. No, it was, we oh, all chose did. it. Yeah. And it's going to be a nice and intimate mastermind. Agents from all over are flying in and it's going to be broker, broker Gnostics. What's the right way? There's not only real agents, so it's all open to everybody. And we're not going to be pitching real. That's not what the conference for. It's growing bettering bettering ourselves as female leaders that's what it's going to be for yeah yeah all right well thank you everybody for joining it is a little after 7 p.m over here in scotland and i'm going to go grab some dinner but i think all you are starting your day where you're at so it's good to see everybody and lana again thank you you're so pretty and beautiful and all that fun stuff yes and we love having you on we'll have lana on some more too so we'll we'll get some more nuggets out of her here in the yeah, future. Next time we'll talk about TikTok. Get ready. TikTok. We'll do that one. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you so much. All right. See you, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye.